Hello everyone and welcome to the Mold X3D 2022 What's New, where we'll be talking about all of the new prevalent features available in Mold X3D Studio. When you open up the Studio interface, there are two things that you can note before you even get started with opening up a project. The first couple notes that I want to make are up in the Preferences menu. Under the Preferences menu, under the Display tab, there's a new option for the Snap toolbar. You'll note that the Snap toolbar looks a little bit different than normal, and that's because all of your traditional snaps have been moved to this dropdown. To get them back to their original configuration, you can use Display, Snap, and go back to Classic Mode. This will put all of the snaps as individual buttons on your Snap toolbar. The second thing under the Preferences menu, under Meshing Control Solid, You'll have a couple of new checkboxes towards the bottom. The first one is create mold base and cooling channels during the final check, which will attempt to create a default cooling channel system for you whenever you export a model without a cooling system. You can always decline this. And if you're a part designer who doesn't want to create cooling channels or a mold base, just studying the flow effects, you can uncheck this box so that the mold base generation doesn't occur. We also have the option to use an auto grid meshing in the cooling system. Auto grid is a different type of meshing from the traditional solid meshing type approach where the solver will actually create the solid mesh for you in a voxel type pattern. This mesh is completely automatic and means that you don't need to interface with any sort of meshing challenges. There are a couple of new CAD functions available to us under the line dropdown. There's a new option to create a rectangle by either just two corner points or by a center point or by using three points. This will create four individual lines. You can see that these are broken from one another that you can manipulate in any way that you want. You also see that there is a, a perpendicular line function. So what this does is it takes two lines that are perpendicular to one another already. Yeah, I have one here, one here, and it creates a perpendicular line between them. This would be actually very useful for cooling channels and runner drawing. Another fantastic option when we have our runner system developed is the ability to change from a line definition to a polysurface. Under more channel polysurface, I can select my runner lines and it will create a geometry from those lines. You'll see under the model tree that it is a polysurface and no longer separated, separated curves. When checking your geometry, there's going to be a third criteria that is identified now, sharp face angle. It's where two faces come together at a very sharp connection. This can cause sharp angle problems in your service mesh. And it's just another inspection to give you an indication that there could be a potential problem. Under the gate wizard, we have a new option for film gate. Film gate allows you to place a large edge gate on your part. And then you can build your runner system off of the ends of this gate. The attribute wizard in general has been broken away from the interface so that you can move it around however you want to. This will ease the ability of your attribution of different objects. When attributing baffles and bubblers, you'll see that the baffles do show up as a different color from the cooling channels, giving you a better indication of what is what. In one of our future versions, this will be updated with the actual geometry before going to match. For baffles and bubblers, we've also included the enhancement of specifying the drill tip. So the drill tip can be either angled, which will put an angled uh, option up here, or a round. Now let's move over into the wonderful world of meshing. When going into the fix mesh function, there are a few updates that we've created. First things first, the sketch function has been updated to allow you to draw elements using four points rather than three. 
and using the sketch function, I can use four points that will allow me to, to select one, two, three, and four to create my two element array here. When using the sketch function, there's also a new checkbox for refined mesh, which when using a four point will allow you to create a larger number of elements across a large gap like this. You'll define the mesh size, press the checkbox, and it'll create a large number of elements such as this. We've also added the ability to combine and explode meshes. So for example, if I wanted to combine this mesh and this mesh, use the combine feature, and now they will be one. In the case where you want to break this mesh away from the base mesh that it was drawn on, you can use explode, and you'll define a feature angle for which you will explode these meshes. All right, jumping into some of the other setup criteria. First things first, the Material Wizards interface has been updated to look a little bit more modern. This gives you the ability to inspect certain information. It gives you a more real update along the graph. The Process Wizard also has some improvements. When using CAE mode, you have a couple of new options as far as the VP switchover. You can use a control point pressure, which instead of specifying a volume percent as your VP switchover, now you can use a point object. And by that point, you can specify at what pressure the melt has to get to at that point to justify the VP switchover. If you want to do this by location, you can set this value very low, which means that once the melt front hits that location, the switchover will happen instantaneously. Under computation, the only changes that can be seen are through the warp tab. There is a new warp solver called nonlinear warp. This allows you to calculate a nonlinear deformation. In MoldX3D's standard and enhanced warps, we consider only linear deformation. Nonlinear warp allows us to consider a nonlinear deformation of the plastic part. This will have to include a buckling analysis, and it should be noted that the computation time is significantly longer for a nonlinear warp than for a regular standard or enhanced warp. Under enhanced warp, we also have a couple of new checkboxes for a fiber filled material. You can output the fiber orientation effect displacement, and also you can output the results for differential temperature and the shrinkage effect. These effects can be taken into account to really output the causes of the warpage that you're seeing. When submitting a job, you can use the batch job creation or the submit batch run button here. This will allow you to schedule your simulations. So instead of running the simulation immediately, you can say to schedule it sometime in the middle of the night. As long as you don't close out of the computing manager until that time, the simulation will be started automatically for you. Jumping into the results of a simulation, there are a lot of new updates to the results that we can utilize. The biggest update in Mold X3D 2022 is the ability to create new results. So rather than just being able to use the results that we give you, you can create your own result options. This will allow you to edit the results in any way that you want to. In addition, the current results can be edited as well by selecting a result and going to result setting, and that will allow you to edit what exactly shows up in this particular result. This does not change the default result here. When a change is made, it'll go to a new category called customize group, and that will have its own options available for it. You can save, delete, change the name of, and pretty much whatever you want to with these types of results. Moving over into the measurement section, First of all, you'll see that the probe function has been moved from the inspection over to measurement. And there are two new options available, the first of which being the radius of curvature. Radius of curvature allows you to select an element on a surface. And when I hit save and close, the number we see here is the average radius across this color plot. The other option is the measuring face. 
measuring face gives you the option to select certain information that you want to extract from a group of elements. For example, if I wanted to calculate the deformation across this surface here, and then I just select the item that I want to be evaluated across this across the surface. So for example, in the case of total displacement, maybe I want to see what the average total displacement is across this surface. I hit save and close, and it gives me the average displacement across the surface. This allows you to isolate particular surfaces from the rest of your geometry and gives you a more clear cut measuring plot. When using a particle tracer in Moldex 3D, there's a new particle filter that allows you to filter out certain particles that you want to be inspecting. So for example, if I only want to see the particles that end up at the end of fill area, I can box select and that will remove all of the other particles in my geometry. I can then trace those by line and only see the lines that are associated with those particles that ended at the end of fill area. I can append my filter at any time by going right clicking on the particle tracer header, particle filter, and I can either revert back to what I originally wanted, or I can make a new selection. Maybe if I want to go to this end of fill, no, it'll only show me the particles that ended at that end of fill. Any result allows you to create result notes now. If I right click on any result, I can go to note, and that will allow me to just make a note for this particular result. This note will be saved for only this run, and any note that you create will show up when you hover over the note in your result list. Finally, there are two new tabs that appear along the top side of your interface. The first of which is the inspection tab. This will only show up when you have results available to you and is kind of a more condensed version of the result tab, but only for measurement and inspection items. The FEA interface button has been moved to its own tab and there will be more buttons that appear here in the future. We'll wrap things up by talking about some advanced module improvements. First of all, Compression molding now supports the ability to create an undercut in your compression zone. This used to be a problem for us whenever we had a negative angle of attack. The compression zone would be creating an extrusion which would overlap any sort of undercut region. This has been improved by removing the volume of the part that intrudes into the compression zone allows us to create a more complete compression zone for different types of geometries. The compression zone mesh generation has also been moved into the surface meshing section so that we have full control over the surface mesh that's generated. We also give you the ability to select your fiber orientation, whether that's planar random, being a two-dimensional random orientation, a 3D random, meaning that the uh, orientation in all three directions is completely random, or completely oriented in one direction. All of these options are going to be available when you select your material for a compression molding type simulation. Lastly, the DOE function or the expert module has been improved to include some new quality factors. The control factors are the same for the most part. They include a couple of control factors here. The quality factors, you have a lot more options. For example, in the case of total displacement, I can use a target as a global. I can uh, choose my goal. And then I can choose my property, which will be aligned with either a, a WCS or some other local coordinate system that I've created. Thank you for watching this What's New in 2022. And if you have any feature suggestions or additional features you'd like to see in moldx 3 d you can email cases.us at moldx3d.com or leave a comment below.